Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel and a new Crusader Kings 3 guide. So a while ago I did a guide focusing on the unique and historical buildings found in Crusader Kings 3, where they are and what they do. Well, a few people asked about regular buildings, so not the unique or historical ones, and so now I have decided to do a guide focusing on buildings and holdings within Crusader Kings 3 because they are interlinked. If you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to hit like as well as subscribe if you haven't done so already. But we're going to get into it here right away, talking about holdings first. So as you know, Crusader Kings 3 is broken down structurally between empires, kingdoms, duchies, counties, and finally, baronies. Each barony found within a county may have a holding. In fact, you can even construct more holdings. As you can see here, you can construct a new holding within the county of Praha, which is essentially a new barony, as it were. The county of Praha, or Prague, has a number of holdings to look at, but there are, in a feudal sense, there are really three main types of holdings. You have a city hold, a castle holding, sorry, a city holding, and uh, as well as a temple holding. Now, tribes have their own unique stuff that I will also talk about, but not right this second. That'll be in a little bit here in the video. So the holder of the county title actually receives the holding. So if I would go and build something here in the county of Zatek, build a holding, say here, construct a new holding, would actually go to the holder of the county, which is Count uh, Jaslav of Zatek. Now, all everything you build, all the holdings you construct, if we start a new one here, it will be constructed at level one. They can all be upgraded to level four, except tribe holdings, those go up to level two. Constructing and or upgrading takes five years and costs gold. If we click here on constructing a new one, you can see it would cost 400 gold and five years for a castle, a city, or a temple. Now, in terms of the holdings, there are different levels and types. Now, the castle holding has the four levels are moat, keep, concentric castle and fortress. They all have different modifiers as far as monthly taxes, levies, garrison, fort level, and required innovation to upgrade them. As you can see, this is a keep. So that is level two. That would give you a bonus of 0.7 gold per month, plus four fort level, levies plus 325, and a garrison of 750. Here, this castle is a moat. It is level one. So a moat is not as powerful as a keep, and then a concentric castle and a fortress. If we go to city, this is a city level one, uh, so just a village center. After that, you can go to large city, city center, and bustling metropolis, all with varying, of course, monthly tax, levy, garrison modifiers. No fort level modifiers in cities or temples those are only found in castle holdings and again you require certain types of innovation to advance windmills 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 that's a very important innovation again now if you go over here to your temple holding you can see your level one is a shrine after that you have temple grounds house of worship and grand temple same thing as before, monthly tax, levies, and garrison modifiers there. Now within these holdings, you can construct different buildings. Uh, and I will go into all the different types of buildings that are available in a little bit. But of course, I mentioned tribes. So now let's take a quick look at holdings for tribes and the different buildings you can build there before I go into what you can do in a non-tribal holding. So here we have a tribal holding. Now tribal holdings can go up to two levels. Now this is just a level one that is a tribal hold that gives you, a, they don't get a lot of taxes, okay? So they get 
plus 0.2 in monthly taxes, fort level plus one, 250 in levies, and 250 in garrison. The next level up is fortified tribal hold. That gives you plus 0.5 in monthly tax, plus 400 levies, plus 500 garrison, and a plus two fort level. Plus the required innovation is planned assemblies for a regular tribal hold you have no required innovation because it's kind of seen as it's pretty much just the base. Now, as far as the types of buildings you can build in a tribal holding, you're very, very limited. You really just have these four. So you have the Palisades and the War Camps, which are, of course, your military ones. And then you have Gathering Halls and Markets. These are focused on uh, money, supply limit, and here you look at prestige and control growth. Now, with any of these buildings, whether it's a tribal holding or a non-tribal holding, you can preview kind of where it can go to the highest level. So you go from a simple palisade up to an upgrade of level two. Obviously, the uh, non-tribal holdings, you can upgrade all the buildings significantly further, but you can kind of see where you're sitting and you can make those decisions as far as the bonuses, what's more important to your given situation at a given time. And if I'm doing anything here, if I have the money, which you only need 75 gold, 200 prestige to work on war camps, war camps gives you a ton of bonuses to your military and then uh, you can bump it up and it gives you even more war camps I, to me trump palisades because i'm a tribal society so i kind of don't care that much about fortification because i'm raiding and moving around a lot uh there can be a lot said for adding gathering halls and markets the nice thing is here in this one you actually have slots for everything you want to do so you could construct a new building in each one of these and upgrade them up to max two. So if you're going to play tall as a tribe, it actually goes pretty quickly because you don't have a lot of choices as far as your buildings and you can only upgrade them to level two if you want to stay as a tribe. Of course, you can then convert all of these to castle holdings and so on um, at a higher cost. Also, if you then say conquer this territory and you want to convert a tribal holding into a castle holding, you can absolutely do so. You just have to pay accordingly. So now that we've covered tribes, which in terms of buildings, like I said, there's not a lot there. You're a migratory tribe. You're not really looking to settle. But of course, if you are a non-tribe, settling and building is definitely very, very important. So let me go through the different types of buildings that there are. So here we have what's considered holding buildings. In this city here in uh, Seponto, you have guilds. Guild halls and guilds in general is one type of city building. It gives you an, a holding tax modifier plus the county development growth of plus 5%. There's nothing for the realm itself. So if your character wants a direct benefit, you're going to have to control it. Now, if you go here to Acre, uh, Asarenza, which is a temple holding, here you can see you have prayer halls, uh, which is part of monasteries. Monasteries are the other holding build buildings that are in a temple. You have tax plus a control growth modifier and then a piety growth. Now, piety, according to the information from Paradox itself, it says you're holder of this holding, but it actually says realm wide. So the question is, is realm the duchy? Is realm the county? It technically doesn't go the county it would be above that so i'm going to go with duchy at this time of course i'm owning this one directly so i would get most of the benefits even though i do have a bishop the bishop gets the holding tax benefit the county which i control gets the control growth and of course the piety growth next type of building are military camps these can be built in castles cities or temples now, uh, military camps, as the name suggests, this is focused on the military. So you start here with, say, hide tents. You get a little bonus in levies, plus uh, archers and skirmisher damage and pursuit modifiers. This can go all the way up here to level eight, which is levying squares, which gives you nice reinforcement rate, much more uh, higher level in levies. This county itself gets a higher supply limit and control growth. 
And then realm wide, you get all of these bonuses to your troops. So military camps, they can again be constructed in castle, city, or temple holdings. Next on the list are duchy buildings. Now, duchy buildings can only be constructed by the feudal or clan ruler in the du jour capital of the duchy. As you can see, this is the du jour capital of the county of Apulia. And you have a number of uh, possibilities as far as the new duchy building you want to build. Which one you pick is entirely up to you depending on what you want. Now, as your realm grows and you control more duchies directly and those duchy holdings, as far as, of course, your domain limit allows it, you can specialize certain things on military and other ones more on development, growth, and economics. Now, remember, one thing you should always look at for these duchy buildings is really go through the preview and look at the maximum, not the beginning, but the maximum. You look at military schools here and then grand military academies. What does it get you? Which one of these buildings gives you the best possible modifier at the end of the tree? That's definitely something you need to keep in mind there. But duchy buildings, again, these can only be constructed by feudal or clan rulers in the du jour capital of a duchy. They have very, very powerful bonuses overall. If we look at the pleasure or the leisure palace, the winter palace level, which is level three, your prestige goes up by 15% every month, stress loss by 35%, hostile scheme success chance, plus 15% personal scheme success chance, plus 15%. And on top of that, your control growth goes up by 0.04 per month and control growth of plus 60%. So again, these duchy buildings are very, very powerful. Then the other thing now, I don't have it here right now, are of course, holy buildings. And holy buildings can only be built in a faith's holy site. So keep that in mind. If you say have something out of Cap Capostella, you can build a holy site there. Then there are also decision buildings. And as the name implies, these are created only through decisions. There are three main ones, the glass monument, parliament, and university. So when those decisions pop up, that's something you can construct. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of different things you can build here in say some of these new building slots. There are a ton of different paths you can go down. I wanna give you some of my favorite ones and some of these differ depending on the terrain you're in. You know, you can't, you, you know, you've got forest forts and hill forts can't be in the same location uh, because one is for hills and one is for forests. But if we look at these are some of the general ones, you've got walls and towers, farms and fields, pastoral lands, hunting grounds and barracks. These are very, very typical in a lot of the different locations, especially here in Europe. Now, some of my favorite ones or my absolute favorite one are hunting grounds. Now, initially you already get a nice bonus. You get a tax of 0.2, then you've got defender advantage plus two, extra levies 50, and your light cavalry does more damage and plus 2% pursuit. If you go all the way down to level eight, you get a nice amount of taxes increase of 1.3. The hostile raid time gets up by up by 30%. So if you're in an area where you're say dealing with Vikings or with hordes or anything like that, it's gonna take them 30% longer to be successful in a raid so you can muster your troops and stop them before they leave and truly destroy your territory. Uh, you get a defender advantage of plus 16, 225 extra levies. You also get a plus 2% de development growth and then really nice uh, modifiers to your men at arms. So the maintenance goes down and then the light cav, damage, toughness, pursuit, and screen go up significantly and skirmisher pursuit go up as well. So hunting grounds is definitely one of my absolute favorite ones and one of the first ones that I build. After that, it's kind of depending on what you prefer. You can either go down pastoral lands, which is a favorite of mine because again, look at all the max. What does it give you? It really buffs up your supply, a decent amount of taxes, and then your development growth of plus 2%. You also get more levies, levy reinforcement, popular opinion goes up and the light and heavy cav toughness go up. The other option you could go down is farms and fields. 
here now in the beginning you get plus 0.5 per month in taxes which can be good especially early in the game when you're not quite there yet in terms of making money but if you go all the way to the end you get 2.6 gold per month in taxes just from farms and farms and fields in one of your holdings plus your supply limit goes up your holding tax in the county goes up by 0.2% or by 2% your development goes up by 5% and temple building construction costs drop by 5% then the next ones after that, you really have a few different directions you can go. I'm looking and I'm not seeing one of them here, but uh, you can look at forestry and quarries are not a bad one. They reduce your construction time and help with development. But of course, you do want something in terms of military. Uh, barracks is a pretty good one to go down. Uh, you get extra levies, which again, in the beginning can be very critical. Your heavy infantry damage and spearman damage go up, but if you go all the way to the end, you get the permanent barracks. You get 825 additional levies. Your levy reinforcement rate of 5%. Your building construction time in the entire county is down by 2%. And then on top of that, you get some massive bonuses to heavy infantry damage and toughness and spearman damage and toughness. Regimental grounds is also one you could go down, but most of the time these are very typical ones here now walls and towers if you compare that to say other forts out there uh the forest forts the hill forts or the watchtower you know this is in my opinion probably the weakest one but it is by far the most common one so if you have this very typical uh castle holding construction in my opinion i would first go with hunting grounds and then either pastoral lands or farms and fields it really depends on which direction you want to go one is more dev one is more income overall uh, even though they both kind of give you the same thing in taxes supply and dev farms give you a little bit more taxes and that and then next you can go into the barracks as well uh, now you could of course upgrade your castle building here itself which helps you overall so you don't really need hill forts, forest forts, walls, towers, and watchtowers. Now, if you're going to build more uh, as far as your castle holding and what it is, again, we talked about the walls and towers here, which aren't bad as in general it goes. The most powerful one with defense and control are hill forts. Levies and tax bonuses come from forest forts. And then watchtower is great if you're somewhere on a frontier say hmm, let's see here you are somewhere out here and you're dealing with kumania or you're building in here and you're dealing with say the mongol hordes coming down watchtowers are great uh, or if you're an 867 start date and say you're at the coast of england watchtowers are fantastic if you can build them now of course you do need uh, the right uh, innovations for it but watchtowers help you with supply and they help against raids so obviously if you're in a territory where you're dealing with a lot of raids it could be worth investing in watchtowers before uh, you know some of the other buildings uh, all of these forts in castle holdings uh, they all give your men at arms some type of bonuses some of them start really early and some of them really late now the final type of holding I want to talk about um, or building are trade ports. Now you can see here right away, uh, we've got a level one and then we can go to level two. Trade ports are great because they help with development growth and they are found in any coastal barony. If you look at here, level one, a small harbor, and we're already at level two here in Apulia. So that is a fishing net weaver. It gives you a plus. 0.5 per month in taxes and 10% development growth. If you develop that all the way out to max level eight, your development growth goes up by 40%, which is huge. And then of course your taxes up by 1.7. So if you can, if you're able to, in some of your own holdings and some of your own counties, investing in trade ports is something I would definitely do. I did kind of a tall campaign on my own with uh, Brittany and I invested very heavily in trade ports and we were making a ton of money thanks to them. So there you have a guide to buildings and holdings in Crusader Kings 3. 
This one's significantly more concise and uh, shorter than my unique historical buildings guide for Crusader Kings 3 because of course these are all generic buildings and generic holding strategies thoughts bonuses and so forth that you can apply to anywhere whereas the other one I really had to go through every single individual location and showcase those so if you haven't checked out that video go check that one out here on the channel as well as long as along with all the other Crusader Kings 3 guides and let's play series I have on here and a pair to Rome and a bunch of other stuff as well now and in future. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit the like button. And until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon.